Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity and launched in July 24. I skipped last month because I was way too busy working on the DOTS course and finishing the C-Sharp course, so I wonder what games I missed in June. This month is once again full of really awesome stuff, there's some action, driving, a bunch of simulators, strategy, platforming, and with quite a bunch of these finding some great success. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Do you know about the awesome free game UI database? Or do you know how Steam is changing assets and reviews? Did you see this awesome post on the benefits of making small games? Or hear some interesting videos that I saw? I covered all of this in my game dev report. It's where I cover the news and any interesting game dev articles I come across every week. Check it out with the link in the description. And just a quick mention, there's an excellent humble bundle that is ending very soon. This one is all about super high quality, high res realistic assets. You've got some really gorgeous looking environments. There's also a bunch of interesting props. Most of these work in Unity, but some of these are in Real only. Although since these are just assets and textures, they should work just fine. All of these assets have an awesome realistic style. The bundle is almost 99% off. For just 25 bucks, you can get all of this. This one is also ending pretty soon, so if you're interested, definitely get it quickly. All right, so starting off at number 10, here we have one with a very silly premise that is actually blowing up. It's called Angerfoot. This one is a fast-paced FPS where your main weapon is really your foot. You can kick your enemies with some very powerful kicks to make them fly backwards or upwards. You can combine kicking and shooting to take out all the enemies in these very unique environments full of props to play with. People are describing it as Hotline Miami, but in first person and with feet. So it's all super fast-paced, there's lots of violence, just chaos everywhere, with an excellent backing soundtrack. If you want a challenge that is also quite silly, then this looks absolutely excellent. It is one of the big hits of this month with over a thousand reviews at 92% positive. Next, for something old school, here is Old School Rally. It's really a very descriptive name. If you remember playing the Colin McRae or the WRC games back in the early 2000s, then this is exactly what it is. It's an old school but modernized rally racer. So you've got those charming low poly cars with some low res textures. It really does achieve that look perfectly. You've got plenty of cars to play with. You can race around unique tracks all across the world. There are also achievements and leaderboards if you're into that sort of thing. So this is really the kind of game that lives or dies based on its car controller based on how it actually works, based on how the car actually moves, and based on the reviews, it does seem to control extremely well. You can speed down the streets and control your car as it skids through the turns. It just launched into early access and already has 400 very positive reviews at 91% positive. Next, here's one that I'm pretty sure I covered in a previous list. It's Gym Simulator 24. This one just graduated from early access. Like the name implies, this one is a simulator game all about managing a gym. So you start from the bottom, you buy an empty rundown warehouse, then you smash some walls, add a new coat of paint, Paint, buy some equipment and machines, then open your gym for people to use. You can promote your gym by placing some ads to get people to join it. You can buy and sell a bunch of supplements. It even has some sort of gym stench mechanic. Apparently it's your job to clean up smelly people. And you can even schedule some fights and some bets. So it seems like a very complete game design. Interestingly enough, this is not a playway game, despite being very much in that style. Also, unlike a lot of other simulators, they usually have a ton of jank. This one seems to be well built. People are really loving this concept with 1600 very positive reviews. It just hit 1.0, so if you're into managing gems, maybe give this a try. Then for a nice defense colony sim game, here is Ark of Sharon. Sharon or Karen. You're really on the back of a giant mysterious walking tree. You can build a fortress with the help of all your minions. So gather some resources, plant some food, construct lots of unique structures to make yourself a nice self-sustaining colony. Then when you are ready, embark onwards onto your next destination. But enemies will come, so do make sure your fortress defenses are up to the task. Build some balisa and some cannons. Make sure you place enough of them to keep your fortress safe from harm. The comments mention how this one is sort of a mix between oxygen not included with tower defense and the FDL pressure mechanic. So for myself, that sounds like a really interesting mix. I'm definitely quite interested. It is out now in early access with 100 very positive reviews. Next, for some unique creature collecting, here is Yowling Mythical Journey. This is a really interesting one. You go out on an adventure, collect some Yowling creatures. There's hundreds to choose from. There's over 300 unique types. You can grow their stats and talents. You can evolve them into more powerful forms and even catch some rare ones. Then with your creatures, you can take them into battle to defeat your foes or simply invite them to help you build up your village. Construct some useful buildings like a restaurant, training grounds and breeding den. The Yowlings can also help you with farming, mining, cooking and a bunch more, so they can be quite helpful for helping you manage your village, but some of them can also turn into demon lords. If so, then you need to defeat them in order to help them regain their consciousness. This one looks like a very well-made creature collector. It is out now in early access with 1200 very positive reviews. Then for something very visually unique, here is Skim. 
Right away, you can see the very interesting visual style. It's got flat colors with some super harsh shadows. The game is a 3D platformer where you jump from shadow to shadow. This makes for some really interesting gameplay. Most of the shadows are static, but some of them do move. So for example, you need to get the timing just right to jump from the shadow of a power pole onto the shadow of a bus, so you can then move along with it and reach the other side. This one is mostly a laid back, relaxing game with only a few challenging platforming sessions. It looks like it's designed to be a nice, jolly experience. Although despite this one getting quite a bit of hype over the past few years, it's actually not selling all that well. It's only got 60 mostly positive reviews. The main complaint seems to be that it's too short and not very deep, but if you want to enjoy a few hours with some interesting gameplay, then maybe give this a try. Next, if you want a cozy city puzzler, check out Terrascape. Here you can build some really gorgeous floating islands. I really love how this looks. This one is very much a city puzzler. The buildings have lots of rules and bonuses based on nearby buildings. You can shuffle your deck cards and play them in the right place for the utmost bonuses. This one is also intentionally a very chill city builder, so there's no time pressure, no combat. You just sit back, relax, and enjoy the cozy city builder vibes. You play some buildings strategically in order to unlock more buildings and cards, combine them to make some mighty complexes. Again, do all of that in a nice relaxing experience. You can play either solo or in co-op multiplayer, or if you want something a bit more confrontational, you can try out the versus multiplayer. People seem to really enjoy this one. It's got almost a thousand very positive reviews. Then if you want to play around with potions, here is the last alchemist. You have become an apprentice to a world-renowned alchemist. Now it's up to you to gain some skills and build some really powerful potions and machines. You can gather some resources and extract essences from them, then combine them with your own recipes to achieve unique, very powerful results. But at the same time, with great power comes great responsibility. With the help of some very cute tiny creatures, you can rebuild your workshop with all kinds of unique machines, explore this world and discover rare ingredients to use in your experiments. The game has a really nice, chill, adventurous vibe, so it's a nice mix of adventure with some simulation. It is out now with 70 very positive reviews. Next for a really deep game, here is Farlands. The story is you've just bought your own planet, it's an empty rock on the edge of the galaxy, and now it's up to you to take this barren wasteland and make it your home. Start manually gathering some resources, plant some food and craft some equipment, then get on your ship, go to a nearby planet to meet up with some vendors and NPCs, do some quests, fight some monsters, and really make this planet your own. This one just launched into early access and they have possibly the most robust roadmap I've ever seen. They've got 9 updates, extremely detailed leading up to the 1.0 launch. There are many games kind of like this nowadays, so it does make it difficult to stand out, which makes it even more impressive how this one quickly got 800 reviews at 96% overwhelmingly positive. So if you like this genre, then this one looks like a must play. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, if you like strategy and defense, here is Cataclysmo. Right away, it has an excellent visual style, flat colors, stylized with some excellent monster designs. You build your defenses, build your fortress brick by brick, set up some towers and place some archers. When night falls, the monsters will attack in huge waves. The building system is really the main selling point. You build it brick by brick, module by module. You can design your fortress exactly as you want it, meaning you don't just build on special places, but really anywhere. You can start off quick and cheap with some structures made of wood, then you can build a quarry to start mining for some stone to make better, more durable walls. Also keep in mind the integrity of your structures. If they are not stable, everything will come crashing down. You can play through an epic single player narrative, or skirmish mode in handcrafted maps, or get infinite replayability with endless randomly generated hordes. It is out now in early access and already has over a thousand very positive reviews. By the way, this game is also made using dots. There is a creative spotlight from a few months ago where they talk about how they built the game. They talk a lot about how they create the flow field pathfinding to make the whole game work how they organize all the systems to make it all really performant. Which, by the way, if you want to learn how to make a game like this, then check out my DOTS course. It is on making a strategy game, and I do use Flow Field Pathfinding implemented in a DOTS manner. So if you want to learn about DOTS or how to make an RTS, then check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launched in July 24. I hope this list helped you see how DNT Engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Gardens, and I hope you enjoy playing it.